Hello students, welcome to the one more session of introduction to embedded system. This is Osan Naik from Kendra Engineering College. In this class, uh, we will study the sensors and uh, actuators. In the previous class, we understood the different types of uh, uh, memory such as ROM and RAM. What are the different classifications of ROM? What are the different classifications of RAM such as SRAM, Dynamic RAM, then uh, NVRAM. So similarly, the classification of the ROMs are PROM, uh, one-time ROM, programmable ROM, mask ROM, flash ROM, all these things we studied and you understood the memories. So, uh, uh, so in this uh, session, you will see the sensor and uh, activator. Actually, I told in my previous uh, session, the sensors are the input device uh, which gets the input from the uh, external world or the other environment, other environment. So, and actuators are the output device, uh, output device, or uh, which is connected to the output pin of the uh, microcontroller or microprocessor. So, sensors are connected to the input port of the embedded system. Activator are connected to the output port of the embedded system. So, uh, an embedded system uh, is in constant interaction with the real world. That means it is getting a continuous input from the real world. This is possible if it is connected with the various types of sensor. So, a sensor is a transducer device that converts energy from one form to the another form. So, energy from one form to the another form. You can see here. So energy from one form to the another form. So uh, different types of uh, sensors are available. So I have here two examples. Uh, one sensor is used in uh, uh, pedometer functionality to count number of steps uh, and other sensor uh, which is called known as ambient light sensor which uh, will sense the intensity of the light. Both uh, sensors are used in various applications. Now. So, in the previous uh, session, we understood uh, an embedded system is used for controlling uh, purpose and for monitoring purpose. So, an embedded system which is used for monitoring purpose cannot change the state of the variable. Similarly, an embedded system which is designed for controlling purpose will produce some changes in the controlling variable to bring the controlled variable to the desired level, to bring the controlled variable to the desired level so here you can see like if the embedded system designed for controlling purpose the system will produce the system will produce some changes in the controlling variable to bring the controlled variable to the desired uh, desired level this is this it is achieved through activator so now what is activator Activator is a form of transducer device, either mechanical or electrical, which converts one uh, converts physical like uh, converts signal into physical action. So, actuator is an output device. Like uh, you can see here, example, a smartwatch uses ambient light sensor to detect the surrounding light intensity and uses an electrical electronic activator circuit to adjust the brightness. Similarly, we have one more example here, you can see here, we have one more example here, like uh, temperature sensing uh, sensor here, in this diagram, temperature sensor detects the heat and uh, this information is passed to the controller where it will be processed by the microcontroller and microprocessor and after that, necessary changes uh, will be implemented through the uh, uh, activator uh, here in this case uh, sprinkler turns on and puts puts out the flame so such type of application where uh, sensor acts like input device uh, and actuator acts like uh, actuator converts the electrical signal into physical action what physical action it will take here it will turn on the sprinkler and uh, it will uh, put out the flame so that is the main job of the actuator now 
the embedded system which is designed for monitoring which can only monitor which cannot do the changes in the uh, system variable for example you have ecg machine it is designed to monitor the uh, heartbeat of the state heartbeat status of the patient uh, which contains set of electrodes uh, all these electrodes are uh, uh, electro electrodes are connected to the body of the patient uh, and variation in the uh, particular parameter will be captured by the sensor and presented to the, through the display to the doctor so it will not uh, uh, it cannot impose control over the patient heartbeats. It cannot impose control over the patient heartbeats and its order. So it cannot uh, impose control over the patient's heartbeat and uh, order. So this is the example for the uh, embedded system which is used for only monitoring purpose. Now you see here uh, the difference between a sensor and activators. Sensor is an input device, activator is an output device. We know sensor converts physical parameter into electrical output. Uh, uh, this actuator converts electrical signal into physical output. So, convert physical parameter into electrical, converts electrical signal into physical. Uh, so, it is a device that detects the events or changes in the environment and send the information to the controller. It is a component of a machine that is responsible for moving and controlling mechanism. Then, the last point here is. Uh, so, sensor helps to monitor the changes in the environment, like helps to monitor the changes. So, sensors are adopted in uh, various uh, applications, so to monitor the changes in the environment. Uh, activator helps to control the environment or physical changes. So, other than that, uh, we have IO subsystem, IO subsystem of the embedded system. Uh, which will help for the uh, it which will facilitate uh, uh, for the interaction of the embedded system with the external world now we will see different types of uh, uh, activator and sensors so first we will see the activator that is a light emitting diode we know light emitting diode so we know light emitting diode is a important output device or activator so uh, this light emitting diode is used in many application like uh, to indicate the presence of a uh, power condition like uh, device on or battery on or uh, uh, char charging of the battery all these will be indicated by the light emitting uh, diode now uh, uh, what is a light emitting diode what is that it is a pn junction diode you can see in the diagram here it is a pn junction diode it has got two terminals the long terminal is called as anode or positive terminal and the short bit short terminal is called as a cathode or negative terminal so the long terminal is connected to vcc through vcc through uh, <coughs> current limiting resistor current limiting resistor and the cathode is connected to normally to the ground so this led can be interfaced to the uh, like uh, this led can be interfaced to the port pin of the processor or controller suppose if you connect uh, this positive terminal to the port pin of the controller and negative terminal to the ground uh, then if the positive pin of the uh, positive pin that is anode to the port pin of the controller and port pin of the controller is in logic level 1 then this led will glow suppose if you connect uh, this negative cathode to the port pin of the controller and uh, this anode to the vcc and if the port pin is at logic 0 then this uh, LED will glow. So, you need to remember this one. Na? To glow the LED, either you need to connect this one to the port pin of the controller or this one to the port pin of the controller. When you connect this one uh, anode to the port pin of the controller, if the port pin is at logic 1, LED will glow. If the port pin at logic 0, LED will uh, off. But if you connect cathode to the port pin of the controller, then if the port pin is uh, at logic 0, LED will glow. If the port pin at logic 1, LED will off. LED will remain off. So, next we will move to the next one that is 7 segment display. 7 segment display. 
so in the seven segment display seven segment led display we are using eight leds normally eight leds connected in this fashion here you can see uh, there are eight leds connected in this fashion this one two three four five six seven and eight this seven leds are used to display alphanumeric character and uh, this uh, the last led is used to display a decimal point decimal point so these leds are connected in a segment form and uh, these leds are named uh, like a b c d e f g and decimal point so you need to start this in uh, start the naming in the uh, clockwise direction like a b c d e f g and uh, decimal point suppose we need to uh, suppose if i want to display uh, 3 then the segment a b c d and g should be lit so suppose i want to display 3 the segment a b c d and g should lit suppose if, if i want to display 0 then segment a b c d e f should lit uh, g should uh, off So, seven segment display, there are two different configurations. One is called as common anode configurations. Other one is called as com common cathode configurations. So, in the common anode configuration, all the eight LEDs, uh, LEDs are connected in this fashion that is all the anodes of the eight LEDs are connected to common anode to VCC. In common cathode all the uh, cathodes of the eight LEDs are connected to the common point and to the ground. Suppose in the common anode if I want to dis glow this LED here you need to give logic 1. In the common cathode, if I want to glow this LED, you need to give here logic 0. So, this is the difference between common anode configuration and common cathode configuration. So, the next uh, uh, device uh, that is activator is uh, optocoupler. So, what is this optocoupler? Optocoupler is an isolation device which will isolate uh, actual two circuit. So, it will isolate uh, two parts of the circuit. So, optocoupler is made of uh, uh, like uh, LED and uh, phototransistor in a single chip. And this is the example or this is the conventional chip available in the market PC817. It is an optocoupler. So, why optocouplers are used? Optocouplers are used in communication industry to suppress the interference that is noise in the data second one is it is can be used for uh, circuit isolation and uh, it, it this optocoupler can be used for in some application like high voltage separation and simultaneously simultaneous separation and signal intensification applications also we are going to use this one optocoupler is used in either input circuits or output circuits so now we will see here we have one uh, circuit diagram here. You can see in the circuit diagram, this is the microcontroller and this is the optocoupler. So, we are using microcontroller AT, AT89C51 and these are the port pin of the microcontroller which is connected to the optocoupler on the both end. And here you can see input circuits are connected to the optocoupler and output circuit is also connected to the optocoupler. That means microcontroller is separated from the input circuit by means of this optocoupler. Similarly, the output circuit is uh, separated by the microcontroller by means of this optocoupler. So, here whatever input comes, this optocoupler will transmit that input to the microcontroller. Microcontroller process that input and transmit the output to the, uh, to the output circuits through this optocoupler. Uh, so, the example for this optocoupler is uh, MCT 2 MIC. So, students, with this, uh, we saw some of the uh, like uh, input and, and output device, like sensors and actuators. In the next class, we will see uh, the other 
device like uh, stepper motor, DC motor, keyboard uh, and uh, working of all these devices in the next session. So uh, with this I will uh, wind up uh, this session. Thank you for co your cooperation. Thank you.